Howdy everybody, Steve here, KM9G, and today I've got this 17 pound box of antenna awesomeness. This is the Zygu VG4 antenna, and it is 40, 20, 15, and 10. It's not an NFED half wave, not in a box like this, not at 17 pounds. Let's get it open and assembled. We have a warranty card, and we have some printed instructions. VG4 antenna installation manual, 40, 20, 15, 10, 1000 watts peak envelope power, 50 ohms resistance. Parts, we have counterpoise, notch filters, U-clamps. There's wrenches included, nice. And then this appears to be German, because why not? So English and German instructions and a warranty card. Put those off to the side. Trap unit already assembled. A pole box, nice. Aluminum plate, lots of hardware, poles, counterpoise, another trap, another pole, and a stray washer in the box. All right, do our assembly instructions have anything useful in them? That's parameters, components. The antenna can be installed on a reliable fixed support or on the wall with expansion bolts. Needs to be three meters above the ground. Should be as open as possible. Install each component from bottom to top as shown in the right figure. Fasten the hose clamp after each main rod component is socketed. Okay, so they're numbered and there's a picture. So you just gotta go by pictures. So this is your main support. And then your counter pie. We have two short and all the rest appear to be the same size. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. One, two, three, four, five. So they gotta go somewhere else. Install the main counterpoise last. Capacitor caps of 2040 should be installed on the upper end. Okay, so I guess we start with the top and work our way down to the bottom instead of the bottom and work our way up to the top. All right. Number seven, so I'm looking for part number 10. Number five. Number two, number one, number three. <laughs> I do not have a part number 10. Okay, we'll put one and two together. Oh, there's, there's parts inside of parts. There we go. Whenever you get stuck on an install, just start working your way out of parts. Are there any more parts inside of parts? Okay, so now can we find number 10? All right, there's number 10 and number nine. Let's put number 10 and nine together. All right, they fit completely inside of each other. So we're gonna need some hose clamps. It comes with wrenches. Yugong tools and Kishida tools. Okay, so there's a little hose clamp. I need a flat-headed screwdriver. Nope, I have a wrench. I have another wrench. There you have it. Number nine and number 10 are connected. And they are about eight foot tall. Stick that by the door. Number eight is a trap unit. So that goes on next. And it already has its clamp on it. All right, there is the trap unit for number eight. And number seven is on the bottom of that. And now we're too tall for inside the building. Number six and number five is another set of traps. Number six, number five, number four. And there's not already a clamp on here, but there is a clamp on the bottom of number seven. All right, there's number four. Number three and number two. Okay, this is number four into number three. This is number two into number three. All right, now we've exceeded the length of our working floor surface, but this is the number one section on the bottom. And then I guess this is just to hold the thing up in the air. Yeah, okay. So where do we go from here? So somewhere between seven and eight, we get some radials. And then the main counterpoise goes at the bottom. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna run out of counterpoise installing into here. Let's put all the big boys at the bottom. All right, there we go. There's all the bottom radials, all the long ones. I've put all the long ones into the bottom section. That leaves me four long ones and two short ones for the middle section. All 
We've got a ground strap, a mounting solution for there, and for the next pull down. So this will actually hold both of those poles together. SO239 at the bottom, and there's something rattling around in there. So you know what we're gonna do? We're gonna open that up. Okay, it is just a loose zip tie rolling around on the inside. Get you guys a nice close up here. So the SO239 on the bottom is made it up to the lower half of the antenna, the radiating plane that we just created. And that is all married up. The center pin goes to the circuit board, as does the shield on the SO239. It wraps around this rather large toroid. That's a single toroid. And this is some type of coax. And then it goes through and wraps around through this coax, sorry. Then it goes and wraps around through this toroid. And then there is a capacitor hiding over here. And then this goes up to this bar here, which connects to the vertical element. All right, let's check this thing out. Center pin does not connect. Nope, center pin does connect. Oh, wow, that's interesting. Shield. Interesting. Okay, so what we have is the center pin on the SO239 connects to this piece here, which would connect to your bottom radial plate. It also connects to this flying lead, and it does not connect to the vertical. The shield connects to this bottom part, which connects to your ground radials, your counterpoise, and this connects to the shield, and this does not connect to the shield. So the toroid inside, the two toroids inside, may be preventing the signal from reaching all the way out here from the multimeter, or it could be a variety of other things. But we will continue down the path and Learn what we learn. Now I'm gonna connect the matchbox up to the bottom of the antenna. Let's see how well that works. And then once you get that far, it becomes rather obvious that the ground lead should connect to that. Seems kind of redundant. I like redundancy, so we're gonna do it. All right, so now we've got the matchbox installed on the bottom and we've got the ground connected. So the only other thing to do is the next set of radials. The next set of radials go up here and up here. So I'm gonna put the big ones here and the small ones here. These are the parts that are left over for part two of the installation. We have two small counterpoise. We have the U-bolts to get it mounted up. We have the tools that it came with. We have a mounting plate if we so desire to use that. And then four of the longer radials. Those are pretty big. Okay, the next thing we need to do is get this thing installed on this tower. And once that's installed, that is a 70 centimeter repeater antenna. We'll have to figure out how to cohabitate those two. And then we can remove this BTV, which is kind of a similar construction, and repurpose that somewhere else. But as you can see, it's kind of cold and snowy out here. Stay tuned for part two of this video, maybe when the weather gets a little bit better. We'll get it out on the tower and we will get it tuned and configured and on the air and we'll give you some more thoughts of it. If you have any questions about how this antenna goes together or any suggestions about how to have a better install when we get up on the tower, leave a comment down below and let me know. So far, my thoughts are that this is a fairly quality piece of kit. It had all of the parts needed, no parts left over, no extra parts. The zip tie that fell apart inside the matching unit I'm gonna blame the zip tie on that one. We're gonna figure out more about how this thing goes together. If you are interested in this antenna, there is a link in the description down below. It is currently $269, and I can get you $15 off if you use my link down below. Otherwise, there's a video right over here I think you'll enjoy next. Thanks for being awesome. I'll see you over there.